we're so thrilled that Dr. Gaddy is here with us today to tell us more about the subject Bible. And I'm so thrilled to have you. I, I just feel like this is an important show, and what you're doing is, is so needed in the body of Christ. I just wanted to, to get all of our viewers out there just to be a part of praying so when this increase comes, they get to be a part of it. So, so tell us what you're doing and what you're bringing forward in this special Harvest Show. Well, Deborah, I would first of all like to thank, thank you and, and Pete Summerall for the, just the opportunity to be here with you. It's, it's a great privilege of mine. Uh, I've been in the Bible business since I was 16 years old. I started in high school selling Bibles, and back in those days, Deborah, your better Bibles were not sold in stores. They were sold by agents, and they were trained to go out into the homes, knock on the door, demonstrate the Bible, and that's the way your better Bibles were sold back in those days. So uh, that's kind of how I got started in the business, and now I've spent over 60 years, only job I have ever had in my life, and I, I think that that's a great honor to be able to do what I love to do, and yet reach hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. Now, our Bible, you know, uh, Deborah and Pete, you know everybody has some type of a Bible. Mm -hmm. Uh, you won't hardly go in any home that doesn't have a Bible anywhere. And uh, I remember when I was about 13 years old, my dad was, uh, uh, we had a farm, and my dad also worked for the government. But a gentleman walked up in the field where my dad was, uh, was working and sold him a great, big, large family Bible. It was probably five inches thick and... Uh, and then we all. And then when I went back to the house, I found one almost just like it. And I always wondered, well, why did my dad buy that Bible? But later on, I'll tell you why my 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 dad purchased that Bible. And it's really, like I said, it's not more Bibles people need, but we do need something that will kind of entice us, and let's say tempt us, and and make us anxious uh, to pick up the Bible in the first place. And so that's what I want to share with you why our Bible is different than any other Bible that's ever been published. Well, you know, you call it the subject Bible. What, what do you mean by a subject Bible? Well, let me ask you a question, uh, Pete. Okay. When you were in school, did you study English and math in the same class at the same time? No. No, you took it by subject, didn't right. you? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Bible is the only book that's ever been written that that uh, it's thousands of subjects are in the Bible, mm -hmm. and they're all just put in there in one great big book. Mm -hmm. So I would like to show, uh, share with you. Uh, well, the better Bibles that are on the market today are called reference Bibles. Is right. that not true? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But we have the only Bible, Pete, that you never, Deborah, that you never ever have to run references again. Okay. That's a time-consuming thing because sometimes I'll have my Bible out, the concordance out, going through the reference, right. and, and I can get bogged down. And then so I know what you mean. Then you're running here, you're running here, and running there. That's what we mean by running references. So I, I've got a Bible here that I, that I brought down, and it's, it's got a concordance to it. Well, a concordance is wonderful, but there's not a concordance com in a Bible that's complete that you can find every subject in the Bible. Uh, the only way you could do that is probably go to a Strong's Concordance. Uh -huh. But with our Bible, I want to share with you now what I mean by never, ever okay. running references again. Okay. If you'll turn in the Bible there, just turn with me. And if you're out there on television watching this program, go along with us. Take your Bible and turn to, uh, uh, turn to uh, Genesis 1, verse 1. And here's what it, how it reads. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now, the subject of that verse uh, is the creation. Now, in all other Bibles, if you wanted to read all the Bible said about the creation, you would do like you said a while ago, Pete, you'd have to go to a concordance, right. and it'd tell you where to go find it. Mm -hmm. Then you'd go look that verse up. Right. Then most of the Bibles that have the center reference, then that reference would tell you to go somewhere else. Right. You may go to the Old Testament, then you may go to the New Testament, so you're just going here. And, and there, and, and even with some of the electronic Bibles that, like I have, you look up a word, but it's not necessarily the subject. Right, that's true. Now, if so, what we're going to do now is show you in Genesis one the subject of that verse happens to be the creation. Mm -hmm. So now, if you'll notice, right in uh, out on the column there, there's a number. Mm -hmm. Right, and that number happens to be what is that number out there, Deborah? Right beside it. One twenty-eight. One twenty-eight. Now that's a page number. Mm -hmm. So in the very back of the Bible. 
if you'll turn to the very back of the Bible, there, uh, the section back here is the whole Bible arranged mm. by subject. And then you turn to that page number. Now, what number did we say it was? Mm -hmm. 128. 128. So let's just turn to page 128. Do you have it there? Uh -huh. All right. If you'll notice there, the subject of that is the creation. And it gives you all, all the verses where the cre uh, universe was created. Wow. Now, not where to go find them, Deborah and Pete. Mm -hmm. It has it written if down. If you had to go find them, you'd be doing what? Well, all the yeah. references. Running references. Be spending all day long. Well, so this absolutely. really is two Bibles in one. Absolutely. That's what it is, Pete. You've right. got it. It's two Bibles. And then over on the next column, it tells you he created the light. Mm -hmm. He created the vegetables. Wow. If you'll notice, then turn the next page. He created the sun. He created the moon. He created the fish. He created the birds. He created over on the next page. He created the wind, the snow, the sleet, the fog. You see, if you were just normally reading that yeah. in, a re in a regular Bible, uh, you would never think of all these things that God created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'd have, just have to use your imagination. Well, this takes meditating on the Word to a whole new level. Right. So you've got all the verses mm -hmm. written out in one place. Now, me being kindly a country boy, I tell people this, Pete. Why gather eggs out on the farm uh -huh. if they're already in the kitchen in the basket? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might be a, 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 okay. a funny way to say it, but uh, it's all in one place. And just right. like I said a while ago, when you were in school, you didn't study all those subjects all at one time. You took them by subject. And that's how this Bible gets its title mm -hmm. and called the Subject Bible, mm -hmm. because you read by subject. You know what's interesting that I notice here? So when I turned over to, like you told me to, all the scriptures, all the references in the entire Bible that refer back to that one little verse up in Genesis, it has it, but I notice it has no commentaries from men. No commentary. It's strictly just the scripture is what you would read. If you turned back right. and looked up all those verses that you're reading back here, you'd find exactly that same right. scripture in the Bible itself. Now... Deborah, uh, Pete, you may not be reading. Uh, you may not uh, be reading along there. If you did, if you'll notice, by every verse throughout the Bible, these, right. these numbers appear. Right. But you may not be reading along. Mm -hmm. You may just think of a subject mm -hmm. that you want to read about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or study. Well, let's say I'm doing a Bible study for my ladies' prayer group on fear. Right. So whatever the subject is, you turn to the back. Now, uh, let me give you a real good example uh, uh, because this is something we're all interested in is, is, is prayer. Mm -hmm. So in the very back of the Bible, it has a complete index mm -hmm. to all of these subjects. Works just exactly wow. like a telephone directory. Wow. So you turn to the P's, and uh, there on prayer, you'll notice it refers us over to page 243. Now, not 243 in the Bible itself. Because but this is in, two books in one. But this is in the subject Bible. We're going to turn to that page number. And what did I remember? Did I say again that was? 243. 243. Page 243. Let's go to uh, 243. It starts on that page. Number page 243. Okay, this is not a Bible drill, but I believe I just about, about got it here on mm -hmm. page 243. You'll notice there the subject at the bottom of the page, it says prayer. Mm -hmm. It gives you the definition of prayer, mm -hmm. which is the yearning of the soul for God. It gives you the duty of prayer. Now let's turn the next page over. It'll give you the conditions of acceptable prayer. Mm -hmm. You must pray in Christ's name. You must pray, uh, pray in faith. And it tells us the prayer of the wicked is not heard. Unless they're praying for salvation, then the prayer of the righteous is heard. Mm -hmm. Let's turn one other page. And it even gives you the place to pray, the time to pray. And over on the next page there, on page uh, 247, it gives you even the positions of the body in praying. Mm -hmm. Who would ever think of the About positions? That. Kneeling, right. bowing, sitting, But all lying, the scriptures, but all, all the actions.